everyone. In just a second, I'm going to be introducing Carrie Ann King, and you are looking at her book right here, and it is beautiful. I love this cover so much, and I just knew that it was Lake Union published because I love their covers. They are doing such amazing work over there with covers. I just love it, and I love all the colors. Oh, it's beautiful. But anyway, you are going to love her. I had such an amazing talk with her. She was so much fun. I could have talked to her for, you know, another hour, but you guys would be bored. So anyway, here is Carrie Ann. Hi everyone, I am so excited because I am speaking with author Carrie Ann King and we are talking, I'm acting like I'm holding the book and I'm not. We are talking about her brand new book called Whisper Me This and it's come out this month, which I was so, I saw it everywhere, Carrie Ann, everywhere. And I couldn't wait to read it because this cover, as you guys have seen already, is so beautiful. It's amazing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw people doing pictures of it all over Instagram and they were making beautiful pictures with it and the colors are so vibrant and everything. So thank you so much for talking with me. Oh, I am so excited to be here and thank you for loving the cover. It's uh -huh. my, it's my fave. <laughs> oh my gosh. First of all, like I, before I even looked, I like have this little game I play now. I like say, is it Lake Union? Because Lake Union has come out with the best covers lately. I don't know, like they are on a roll. And it's like, as soon as I saw it, I'm like, Lake Union. It's a Lake Union cover. <laughs> I just know it. I just, <laughs> their color, I don't know, the colors all of a sudden, like within the last year, they've just stepped up their game with covers. And I just love their design so much. Yeah, yeah, me too. I I, uh, I really honestly was not really excited about my last cover, my last year's book, um, I Wish You Happy. Um, but this one, yeah, I, I was in love with it from, from the very, very go. And um, actually, the, the, the book itself, they, they went above and beyond. So the dust jacket is gorgeous. It has actually raised lettering where my name is. And it looks a little 3D. It's, it's, really, it's really awesome. <laughs> yeah, and I can only see it on digital, so I'm like, oh, I want, I'm, that's okay. I will go look for it when I go to the bookstore. Sometimes I go to Barnes & Noble just to go look at the covers because I've seen, I've read the books. Because so. <laughs> <laughs> they are. I just want to appreciate them. So, okay, the title, what we can talk about. We don't give spoilers, but um, – I love the little like poem in the beginning. Did you, I wanted to look that up. Is that yours? Did you have that poem or did you get it? It, it, it is mine. Although I, I have to say, I can't quite take credit for it because it's one of those things I just kind of, I downloaded it <laughs> like from, okay. from somewhere. I don't know where. Right. So there's, there's a story around that. If do you want, do you want the yes, story? Absolutely. Okay. All right. Well, cool. So this book actually was the book without a title for like ever. I, I had actually sent it into my editor and we still didn't like the title for this book and I, I wasn't happy with it. So I was working on revisions. I actually had my first um, round of revisions back from my editor and I was with my husband bought a Studebaker and this beautiful old uh, I can never remember what it is, and he gets all upset with me. 49? <laughs> Studebaker Land Cruiser. It's absolutely this gorgeous car. So we were actually out of town working on polishing the car. So my hands were busy, and my brain was wandering around the book, and I just started downloading these lyrics. So I, I had to take a break, and I ran to my computer, and I typed everything down, and then I polished it up. And then my son actually turned it into a real song for me. That's so right. yes on yes. your website yes yeah <laughs> I saw that and I want everybody I'm gonna post your website underneath here go there because I was gonna ask you about that like how that became a song right so, right that's how well he's he's very talented and uh actually so that was really fun too because I had a book signing for the last book and I invited my son to come and do a little music for us at the book signing we had it in a local brew pub and it was really fun and he did some live music and then I didn't know he had the song ready already so he played the song for me at my book signing and I cried and it was all really awesome and uh, then we sent him to the studio where he's been before only he usually does rock and roll stuff but he did this nice uh, mellow song for me so yeah, that was really yeah. exciting yeah, yeah that's why I was like did you oh that's that's so <laughs> cool I'm yeah so everybody gotta go you gotta go see that so the first thing I love to talk about is your first line okay and I love this first line when the first time I read it but then I always go back and reread the first chapter because I like to see like how it was set up <laughs> for books I just that's what I do 
And I found other people that do it too, so now I don't feel so weird. But the first line is so amazing. And it says, my parents' bedroom has always been off limits. And like right there, you know, like the story, because isn't that true? But it wasn't for me. But it was true that my parents, I did not, like it's almost like there was this line that we couldn't cross into my parents' bedroom. I don't know, it was weird. And then you take that step, like I remember like as a teenager and you take that step and you'd be like, whoa, like what is in here, you know? <laughs> so I love that line because I, I try not to do that with my own children, but definitely for my parents, that was true. Yeah, and, and it's not that my parents were in no way like the parents in this book. And, you know, there there was not even the hint of any domestic violence in my family growing up. And yet, they, they did draw that line. It was, it was a very clear line. We are the parents. You are the children. This is our space. You may come in by invitation, but otherwise, this is, this is not your place to be. And so that, that probably found its way into the book from there. Yeah, I love that. So, and then my other favorite line is always the one at the end of chapter one because it's got to get me to chapter two and it's a little long but it's worth it everybody it's worth it so <laughs> i'm going to read it and when the door closes behind her with a barely audible click i know that if i if i have punished her for taking marley from me then i have also punished myself and you know what? I didn't even really pay attention to it the first time as much. When I went back, I was like, wow, that was a great line. <laughs> what a way to set up this story. And we don't do spoilers, so everybody got to read it to know what that means. But it was perfect. How did you, how, what were you thinking when you were, you know, writing that line to get everybody to the chapter two part of this book? Um, first off, it's really interesting because that line kept getting getting revised. <laughs> it was I, I had the basics of it from the beginning. I, I really did want to make the point that um, Maisie did cut off her mother, and that there was you know this this tension between them from the very beginning. And then through the rest of the book, we come to understand you know a lot about mom and about Maisie and why that happened. And so that line was important to me to set that up from the very beginning. And so just getting it completely totally right, it came back. It came back from the editor, and I fixed it. And then it came back in copy edits, and then it came back again in proofs. And we just kept, you know, we just kept picking at it until we got it to where it where it is now. Well, I'm gonna let you tell everybody like the bait because I don't want to give anything away. So I'm gonna let you tell, and then we'll and then we'll talk from there because then I'll know how much you want me to say. <laughs> Okay, that, that is always the hardest thing for me to do, to, to tell the basics of the story. You'd think I'd have it done by now. But um, Maisie is, uh, she's a single mom, and she's very bright, but she's really never been able to settle to anything. So her entire life, she's just kind of felt like she's a little adrift, like something's missing, and like her mother's expectations of her have always been off the charts too high, could never measure up. So this is the background. And at the beginning of the book, she gets called home because her mother is in a coma and her father, who she adores, has been actually, he's under suspicion of domestic violence and possibly criminal neglect in the way that her mother ended up in the hospital. And that's pretty much all I really want to tell you other than when she gets home, she discovers all of these secrets she didn't know as she's trying to take care of her parents' affairs, including everything evidence of a twin sister who she always thought was only an imaginary friend. I know, like as I was reading it, I, I loved her story. I just connected with her. I've been a single mom and I, you know, I don't know. I just really connected with her story and as it, as it was unfolding and you had so many different layers and it was just like, it was crazy. And, and at, that's why I said, I don't know what to say. Cause I don't want, I want everybody to experience it like I did and to get that connection. I mean, I thought that you did such a good job in making her character so vulnerable, but so lovable you know, and, and of course, I mean, she's dealing with these parents, she's an only child and she's dealing with these crazy parents, that she, you know, and, and at my age, like I, my parents are no longer here, but I mean, I remember that I remember, you know, dealing with, so I don't know, I felt like an instant connection with her. And are you hearing that from a lot of your readers? 
I, I am, and I, I really do I appreciate that. And a lot of my readers have been through some similar sorts of things. I don't mind saying that there is a theme of, of domestic violence that runs through this book. Right. And right. I have heard from a lot of my readers that this is definitely a theme that resonates with them, as you know, I thought it probably would. It's so common. It's so incredibly prevalent. Um, I've, I'm a mental health counselor, or I have been, not currently, um, and I've heard so many stories from both sides, and, and I do need to make that point, men and women who've been through these kinds of relationships, and so it, it really was important for me to bring that out in, in a way that um, is also hopeful, because there's, there, there is a way out, it, just sometimes it takes a little while to find it so yeah and they're gonna you know for book clubs for people who run book clubs you have book club questions at the end of the book which I love when you guys do that and you know because it is a perfect book club book you know because you can just talk about it. you know because I never I, until I talk to you I'm like I can't talk to anybody about this book <laughs> That's why I love talking to you about it because I'm like, ah, uh, it's a perfect book club book. They could really like dig into so many aspects of it. I mean, we've got her being a single mom. We've got her daughter. Okay. Which I have two daughters. So I love the relationship between her and her daughter and you made her daughter. So like one of my daughters that, you know, like so <laughs> smart and, and, and quippy and, you know, just <laughs> I love the and the, and the and the thing they have to go through from the beginning to the end the, how their relationship grows and you know so I there's just so many layers that's why I said I, I think it's perfect book club book. Yeah, and I'm really excited about that idea. I live in a tiny town, so I, I don't really have a book club to go to where I live. But um, I'm totally open to doing book clubs, you know, by Skype or on a Zoom or something like that. I'm yeah. I'm looking at, at finding some of those because. I love talking about the book too, and I adore talking to readers. I am a reader, you know, first and foremost. That's why I write, right? Yeah, I, I, I don't. I haven't found any good book clubs around here either. It's really yeah. weird. I went to one, and they like ended up drinking wine and not talking about the book. And of course, me, like as a reader, I'm like, no, we have to talk about the book. <laughs> a wine club. <laughs> it was more like, yeah, it was like a book and wine club, but just wine, really. It was. <laughs> right, right. And the books are irrelevant. An excuse, right? Excuse, <laughs> right. But I'm like one of those people that comes to a book club and actually have read the book, right? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I've been playing with the idea of actually starting an online book club. So yeah. having some of my favorite authors come in and doing it through a Zoom so yes. that I would every month have, you know, one of my favorite books, one of my favorite authors and throw the little party myself, have it be online from oh my people gosh. all over the country. If you do that, let me know. Because okay. I will sign up. I, seriously. Because I have looked into, some people have done online ones, but then they charge you. And, oh. and it gets all icky, like with the paying. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird. I don't know. Like they're trying to make money. I never think you should make money off of book clubs. Okay. I don't know. It seems right, kind of weird. Yeah. It's kind of, I don't know. But anyway, that's just a weird well, yeah. thing. <laughs> but yeah, if you do that, I mean, because I really don't know anybody who has, and I think it's an amazing idea because I would be there. I would be there with my little notes, having read every page. <laughs> and you could, you know, bring your own glass of wine. That's right. Home. Right. Or everybody yeah. can do it, you know, but we have to talk about the books. So. <laughs> so, okay, this is your third novel, but then I see books behind you there. So I'm like, this is not your third novel at all. <laughs> nope. <laughs> it's my third Carrie Ann King novel. Okay. So I began writing books as my real given name, which is Carrie Schaefer. Okay. And those books are fantasy and paranormal mystery. So the crossover line is that they all also feature strong women characters. That's that's a trademark of, mm -hmm. of mine. They tend to also have an undercurrent of romance. Um, other than that, they're very different kinds of books. So when I launched into writing women's fiction, which was my wonderful agent's idea by the way she's like why don't you try this I think you'd be really good at women's fiction so it's like all right cool I'll give it a try <laughs> so it's been fun and, and I love it but the publisher wanted me to have a different name for that because the two lines of books are very different and they didn't want readers to be confused yeah so, I can see by the covers behind you how different but I'm loving the color like I love it I love those covers too so yeah. I do think you have great covers but um, I've been lucky in my covers yeah. I really have uh, yeah. So, okay, this one you're out promoting. I mean, I know this is a crazy time for you, but are you working on another one right now? 
Absolutely. I am always writing another book. That, that's that's one, of my, one of my rules for myself, actually. It's really easy as an author to get so caught up in the book that you're launching. If any reviews are negative or if the book doesn't do really well or whatever, then it can be horribly depressing if you're totally bound up in that book. And one of the best antidotes to that is writing another book because yes. then that's your current baby. So yes, I am. And it's actually under contract with Lake Union again. It will be out next summer in August, awesome. end of August. Well, you can, you know, let me know. I'll be an early reader and we can talk again. <laughs> but I think that is the best advice for, um, I see a lot of, of new writers, debut authors. Okay. And they will, they get so caught up in that book. And they're young, you know, and of course, like I think anybody in their twenties and thirties are young. So <laughs> yeah. since I have children that age, it's like, yeah, you're there. So, so I always look at them and I'm like, just write another book, just write another, you know, you've got another one, just write it and then let that one be, let that one do what it's going to do, you know? Right. That's what and it takes a long time. This is really good advice that I had when I first started writing and I didn't quite believe it, but it, it takes a lot of books before you build up enough of a presence to have your books be visible to the public really right, so right. you know trying to find readers you have to keep writing books yes. and you know yes. apart from the fact that it's fine I mean I'm a writer and I write so right. why would I not why, why would, would I not, not be writing, be writing? books <laughs> I have up behind you there, you see there there are three uh, sort of self, my agent and I collaborated on them that, that are um, actually novellas, because I didn't have a contract at the time, and I was like, well, I'm, I'm writing, I, I want to put something out there, she's like, well, why don't we kind of independently publish as a, as a joint project some novellas, so I'm like, okay, cool, I'll do that, because I'm writing, I'm always writing, and I loved writing those, they were, they were great fun. Right. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. And I wish I had the book to hold up again because I keep acting like I do because I'm surrounded <laughs> by books, but I don't. But anyway, guys, go look at this cover. You are going to love it. Like I said, I saw it all over Instagram. People are making beautiful pictures with this cover yeah. because it is so beautiful. And I am so happy that I found you and I was able to talk to you and able to read this book because I loved it so much. So, Thank you. <laughs> but seriously, call me. Okay. You know how to find me next book. I want to read it early and I, I love your writing. And, uh, so I will put all of Carrie Ann's links underneath here. I am going to be giving away a copy because she has graciously said yes, that we can give away a copy on Instagram. So you just go over to my Instagram account and you can win a copy today. And thank you so much, Carrie Ann. Thank you. Okay. We'll talk <laughs> soon. Okay. Okay, have a great watching day. my interview with Carrie Ann wasn't she awesome I love her I love her so much and this book whisper me this it is crazy good okay you're gonna love it and I'm gonna put all of her links underneath here like I said we are gonna be giving away a copy on Instagram so go to the writing fun Instagram account on Instagram Instagram account on Instagram whatever go over there <laughs> and I'll have a question of the day answer it and you'll be entered to win so thanks for watching everyone